Welcome back. It's Lionel Tech Lead and partner at West Vault. And today I have a special video called Tech Lead Clones Google Forms. What happened over the weekend is my brother called me up and said, Hey Lionel, I got a problem. They have implemented a new form system for my business and every single student has to come and make a declaration online using a QR code to a form. And they need to say whether they've been to any one of the high COVID countries anywhere in the world. And he was panicking and he said, look, I had to get it out by Monday because it was the weekend. So he suggested that I use Google Forms. Could I help him set up Google Forms so that he could use it on his class? And your tech lead here tried, really tried, okay? I put in a whole of five minutes and then I gave up setting up Google Forms because they wanted my information. At this point of time, I decided with like any old good tech lead and PHP master pro Jedi that I would clone Google Forms and let him use it. And that was why I decided to go ahead and do use E2 framework to clone this. But while I was doing that, I thought, hey, this is a, be a good opportunity because I don't have that many projects to share with you guys. The thoughts and processes as I go through making an application, usually it's with a team, it's a lot more longer, it's a lot more boring. This one, on the other hand, was a lot faster, same framework, same mindset to get a project out and running and some of the insights at how I actually do this. And also give you an idea what the capability of the E2 project is and the speed at which I developed it. So three main areas that I covered in. So let's get into it. Let's talk about the project to begin with. What are the needs? So step one is always defining your needs, defining your minimal variable product. That was the thing that I had to show my brother on Monday, otherwise his business would not run. So let's talk about it. We first, we needed something that appears on mobile, okay? Um, then people would enter it, a form, enter some questions and it would be stored and it would go somewhere. It would go someplace. So that's number two. And number three, it would have to be stored somewhere and be displayed later on. Would it be email? What was the best way to do it? Remember, storage is more difficult. So this is the three insights. It had to be mobile. It had to store the information and have a workflow and ask questions on the form. And it had to have that information be analyzed or reported. This is a very common uh, workflow. So then I started thinking, okay, let's look at the different technology stacks that we can do. First, I think this looks very similar to a crude application. C for create, R, read, U, update, D, delete. That's very common, it's like rows on Excel, spreadsheet. And all the frameworks really excel in this, especially E2, because it's really set up like that. It has a perfect flow with the uh, crude, um, uh, what do you call it, adapters for it. So that's why I decided to use E2. I know it really well and it has everything built in. Then I needed some graphic design on it, right? You just can't have a form that's so ugly looking. At least give them something to look at. And luckily and behold, E2 comes with Bootstrap 3 thrown in. I wasn't going to waste any time upgrading it to 4. Let's just leave that in there. And then finally, the database store. So I decided, okay, let's think about this. What kind of functions do we have with the database? I mean, to me, it looks like mainly just insert and read it. You know, they're not gonna look at data. They're not gonna have different people accessing the thing. It's probably very static. So at this point of time, I decided, okay, there will be probably two tables. One, just the, the answers to the thing and two, the users who would set up the questionnaire. Now. One of the most important things is how complex your data is going to be. Given this, that the number of read writes are so small, I decided to go with SQL Lite. SQL Lite. Now, why would I do this? A couple of questions, a couple of reasons. One, much more faster to deploy. SQL Lite is a, just a static file. It can, with extra taggings on it. I wouldn't have to go and write a MySQL or MariaDB database where I have to go and set up and set up the terms and all that. Second reason, not very complicated. I could just roll this whole thing out and it'll be like that. 
So SQL Lite is my database and it includes a couple little bit powerful stuff, counting, selects, a little bit, but I don't need the full suite of SQL tools. So that is the third thing. Now, the final thing I needed to decide was whether I wanted to have some front end. So given that number of sheets or pages on this would probably be one. You don't want them spending a lot of time using the application uh, on the day itself. You just want one page, maybe scroll it out and down. Now, uh, as I said, E2 comes with jQuery powered in there. I know some of you, when it comes to JavaScript and jQuery, you're like, oh, I hate this stuff but I wasn't going to use very much of it. If I needed to, I'd just dripple it along. You know, it's like a, you know, MSG, a little bit of it, it's not too bad. I can always add it off or I can go into uh, Vue.js later on. So this was the overall framework of the idea of what I created. I used the same model design, I seen the same crude architecture of the E2 application and I rolled it out. Now, let me show you guys what I came up with. I'm not going to talk too much about the coding. You'll be able to see it in person. I'll just talk about the flow through and some of the ideas of how I could. Okay, so let's show you how this um, Google Form clone works. Basically here, I've got some clients and each client has a unique code that they will log into. So when you get the URL, you click that. Let's click on this. Okay. So this is what it looks like. There's a form here, has a couple of questions. What's your name? I am the tech lead. Have you been in China last 14 days? No, are you feeling well? Yes. And basically this is a hidden and you press this and you have a form like this. So it even comes in responsive mode. So this is ideal for making yourself have a mobile application. Most people are gonna use a mobile application or use it on their phone. So Bootstrap handles that out of the box. The other thing is that it is configurable. So one of the worst things is that with Google Forms is that let's say my clients want to change some of them, uh, some of the stuff themselves, or you want to configure it, it can be done this way. What I've done is I've created a uh, URL uh, using J uh, JSON and we can just change that, you know. Now the hot area is India, you know, things change so fast and maybe in the last 21 days. Okay, you want to do that. Okay, so when you go over and you use the code right now, it should say uh, whether someone has gone to India. No offense to anybody, that is. So <clears throat> this is just a very simple application, but it meets all the criteria that I was talking about earlier. And so let's take a look at the code in detail, right? So let's close this up here. I want you just to look at the cool, the main components that we want to talk about. First, I have a controller. So we only need to bother about action index and action login, sorry, not login, uh, form. So that's the one that handles your details and of course we can do pretty URL to make it look nice like the Google form but we're just basically keeping it simple like this okay the next area is you want to thank you just a final page when you submit correctly and you want to do some validations <clears throat> the next area you want to look at is of course the form itself now what we're doing here is I'm just highlighting here before each uh, loop. What this does is that it goes through the JSON object that we created in the back end and outputs each row uh, with a different input. Now the final part about it is of course the back end module and I put it in the back end and it's just simply got answers, clients and default. Don't worry about default. In answers we just want to create, that's the form that you're working with. In most of the cases it's just to edit the answer. The most important thing is the form itself. And the most important part about the form here, right, is the fact that it is a JSON uh, object. So if it's the, the model actually handles most of it. So it runs a JSON and then outputs all the configuration as a JSON. 
So if you look at the back end, right? There's only three fields, actually four. Uh, ID, the name, the client, the code, and another JSON field called forms. So if you look at it, you'll see it in uh, edit. Okay, and there you have it. And then of course we put a JavaScript uh, system just to generate random variables to a random string to create a code. <clears throat> and after that, right, what is interesting is actually running through the code to generate the form. So here I have that code here. This loops through, right, and it takes certain criteria. So what kind of type it is. So if you're looking here, it says, okay, the type is a uh, text, type is a date, type is a Boolean. So that's where it is here. It runs this and then it outputs the correct, um, basically, uh, HTML plus uh, function. And then there's some settings over there, defaults and, and settings that I've done. And then finally, the last part, which is where I save the array. So again, I string it using JSON encode uh, and put it into the answer table. So this this here is a uh, form widget that you can download. Uh, I think we're calling it, oh, what do we call this? Uh, I think it's, it's called the KDN JSON editor. Not the easiest way to edit your code, to be honest, but uh, I couldn't come up with anything in such short period of time, so there it is. Uh, and then your client's name, this is a little bit of back end. So you can always improve the UI and UX of this. But what I wanted to talk about is basically the, uh, the functionality of E2 of how we can actually clean, uh, clone Google Forms and turn it into such a, <clears throat> a version like this. So after this, right, you can extend this. Like I think the total amount of time I spent on this was about two and a half hours, including all the Google searches to make sure I get the right function names. Uh, then some certain amount of decoration and basically uh, cleaning up some of the UI on the front. But within two to three hours using the E2 framework, I've actually cloned Google Forms. And that's what you can do with the power of PHP and the lab stack or PHP and the SQL stack. So thanks everybody for listening. And that's the bottom line because the tech leads said so.